Switching to cricket on the Tuesday edition of the Sportsbank Zone. Trinidad and Tobago's top cricketers were presented with awards for their exploits in 2023 at a ceremony held at the Centerpoint Mall in Chaguanas on Saturday. This was the TTCB's first awards ceremony in six years. West Indies wicketkeeper batsman Nicholas Puran, who celebrated his 28th birthday on Monday, walked away with the top award, International Cricketer of the Year. Puran averages 70 in one-day internationals and 35.20 in T20s this year and was part of the Trinbago Knight Riders team that finished runners-up in the Caribbean Premier League brought to you by Republic Bank. Meanwhile, Diane Bravo was named National Cricketer of the Year, having scored 446 runs in five matches for Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in the West Indies four-day championship. Bravo averaged 55.75 runs per innings. During his remarks, Cricket West Indies President Dr. Kishore Shallow said his board will adopt some of the TTCB's cricketing models and addressed the possible major earning potential of hosting the ICC T20 World Cup scheduled for 2024. From a CWI perspective, Cricket West Indies, we are certainly going to try and adapt and expand on that model that the TTCB has been enjoying and employing over the years, particularly for women's cricket, even for the under 13 program, and they have a vibrant under 19, and even they have been leaders trying to advocate for under 23 program in the region. It's no secret that next year is going to be the biggest year in the history of West Indies cricket. And why is that? Because we are going to have the opportunity to stage the biggest cricket World Cup ever. For the first time, we're going to have 20 teams in our cricket global event. And all 20 teams are going to be based in the Caribbean at some stage. Of course, we are co-hosting with the USA. But majority of the games, a significant majority of the games, are going to be hosted right here in the Caribbean and, of course, here in Trinidad and Tobago as well. And the opportunities that we are going to unlock through this World Cup is tremendous in that the last World Cup hosted in Australia, similar to T20 World Cup, they were able to generate some 365 million US dollars. And that is the potential that exists for us to share in this part of the globe. Additionally, over 106 countries play cricket globally, of course, and they're, they're estimated to be one billion cricket lovers and followers of the game. And we are going to have millions viewing the Caribbean. Yeah, Cricket West Indies President Dr. Kishore Shallow. Sports Minister Shamfa Kojo, in her speech, pledged her continued support for cricket in Trinidad and Tobago. When I entered uh, or assumed duties as Minister of Sport in 2018, he had uh, opened his arms and reached out and expressed how passionate he is about utilizing cricket or sport as a way of transforming lives and creating opportunities for young people. And I said, I don't, I can never, ever, no matter how uh, experience or inexperience a club may be once you are working with young people I am right on board whether it's cricket whether it's football badminton because for me it is more than sports it's about developing people it's about providing opportunities for young people to develop themselves personally and professionally it's uh, helping our youngsters to utilize their time Positively, it's about nation building. And if anything else couldn't, we know that sports can. Yeah, Shamfa Conjure there, Minister of Sport in Trinidad 
and Tobago. Now, Cricket West Indies Vice President, Azim Bazareth, um, he was awarded the Administrator of the Year, of course. He is President of the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, and he joins us on the show. Um, good afternoon and welcome, Mr. Bazareth. How are you doing? Good afternoon and good afternoon to all your viewers. Uh, well, I, I'm doing quite well. Congratulations on being named Administrator of the Year, first of all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, explain to me exactly how it works. It, I, I must admit um, that when I saw it, I thought to myself, well, it's a Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board Awards Ceremony, and the president has been named Administrator of the Year. Yes. The, um, originally, when the decision was made by the executive, I um, had declined to accept the, the offer. And... Uh, what happened is that I stepped out of the meeting. I got a call while the meeting was going on. And on my return back to the meeting, um, the other executive members insist that I accept the award. And then after much deliberations, I agreed to accept the, the, the award. But really and truly, I, I think that the award should have been, you know, just given to, to somebody else who would have um, the, you know, who would have served in different capacities, but since the executive had made that, uh, that decision, and it was 10 members, the executive of the board consists of 11 people, 10 of the members um, said that, you know, they are not going to change the decision, and they went ahead. So I had, I had no choice but to accept the, accept the decision of the executive. Right, and as well um, also, we must, we must also recognize that this is the first award, first presentation of awards function in, in six years. And it's maybe because of all the, the problems that we went through and the plan and programs that we, well, well, as a matter of fact, they had said that um, the speaker who did the introduction and so on, he had indicated that because of the plans and programs that we had done um, post COVID to ensure that the game returned back to normalcy, um, a lot of it and, and the programs that was um, my idea of what to do and so on. So maybe they felt that um, because of that, that I was I w should have received the award. Right, and as him, as we're saying, congratulations. Also, congratulations for winning the Hummingbird Gold Medal because we know back in Trinidad and Tobago what an honor it is to be to be bestowed with such an hi a high award. So congratulations for that. Talk to me now about some of the athletes that received awards and just the importance of recognizing the achievements of young cricketers. Yeah, thank you very much, Maria. Um, of course, it is very important that at the end of any season, and one of my mantra was that we must show appreciation to the young cricketers of our nation. And uh, every weekend, cricketers of our country will left their home very early in the morning because the, the board itself is responsible for the 24 top clubs in the country, the top tier competition in the, in the country, which is called the Premiership Division 1 and 2. So every weekend, the players will leave their home on Saturdays and Sundays and go out in different communities across Trinidad. And the Premiership One consists of eight clubs, and those clubs are spread all over Trinidad. Premiership, there's north and south. So the the traveling will be in smaller, um, uh, less miles they will have to travel. So <clears throat> we think it is very important for the sacrifices that these players will have made over six months that we should recognize them. And it is traditionally what the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board has done over the years. As I said earlier, you know, we did not have a, a function since 2017. And that was because of um, funding, financial um, constraints. We could not have a function. Uh, but of course, after the COVID 2020, 21 and 22, we could not gather to host any function. So we think it was very important that this year, as soon as we got the OK, we think that it was um, right to start planning for our presentation function again, and that was done. It was a function that was very well attended, a, a gala event, you know, nearly over 300 people attended the function, and we were graced with the presence of our Minister of Sport and Community Development in Trinidad and Tobago, the Honourable member of parliament for Tobago West, Ms. Shamfa Kojo, 
And also we were graced with the presence of the president of Cricket West Indies, Dr. Kishu Shalom. Yeah, really, really good for the men. Now my question, when are the women getting their awards? Well, we, we work in conjunction with the women. The women had already had their presentation of awards function. As you are aware, um, I think at the end of the season, they would have gotten their, their prizes um, on the last day of the tournament. What happened is that in Trinidad and Tobago, there is an association that is responsible for administering the women's cricket, and they had their presentation already. We have already had discussion with the women because a number of people had asked and were not aware that the women clubs and, and players were already given their prizes, that for next year, we are going to merge both women and men um, for one presentation in 2020. Yeah, I think the women would really love that because it'll give them the opportunity, of course, to mix with the male players, um, rub shoulders, you know, have conversations with the male players and just feel a part of everything. So that aside now, how has the job been, Vice President of CWI? Well, um, there is work to be done. Um, it's, it's a bit easy, lots of meetings and so on. So work has been going on and we are trying to do our best to ensure that, you know, West Indies cricket moved properly. And of course, we are doing our best to try to get West Indies cricket at the top. Mm. All right, Asim, you've been president for five terms now and um, Trinidad and Tobago has been known for having very strong cricket leaders. I remember the years of uh, Alain Lucquois, um governance. Um, there was a point in one of the cycles of West Indies cricket presidency that your name came up as a possible candidate for the presidential role. Is, is that something you look at at any time? Not at all. I, I, I'm very surprised to hear that my name ever came up for, well, for presidency. It, it, was, it was in the grapevines. It was never official. So that's why I'm putting it to you. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't aware of that. I, and I don't think that, um, that at this stage I will be thinking about President of CWI. Mm. But uh, talk to us quickly then about your reign as the, the, the TNT cricket boss, because five terms is a long time. And, you know, ever so often we hear sporting administrations uh, discuss the issue of term limits and so on. Um, how satisfied are you with your reign and how much longer might you go? Well, I'm very satisfied with my reign, um, and, and I really, it's, it's a good thing you remind me his five terms. I, I couldn't even remember his five terms, <laughs> but I know that, that I, I am there for a long while. Um, the, recently, in 2021, there was um, some changes to our constitution and our governance in Trinidad and Tobago here. Um, we had introduced, we have introduced term limits for presidents. Um, now, two terms, no, no one can serve from 2021, no one can serve um, more than two four-year terms in office as president. So I will have one more term after this term complete in 2025, mm -hmm. and it is my intention to complete my, my two um, two term limits. Yeah, okay, and, and how, 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 what's your overall view on, on term limits? Because I've had many <laughs> discussions with sporting presidents and administrators, and there are varying views. There are times people feel that because of the critical mass and um, some of the smaller population uh, within the Caribbean that you have really high quality um, presidents and administrators who aren't easily replaced. Um, your, what's your overall view on term limits, not just with cricket, but as a sporting boss? I, I think after a period of time, people get fed up of you. Just like me, there are people in Trinidad, of course, who maybe feel that I should go. But I am, I am after, you know, deliberation and hearing different from different quarters. I am a strong, a strong advocate now of term limits. Um, we must be able to groom someone to take over at some time. And of course, the organization or the institution that you must be able to, to sort of try to get as much as possible from those people who would have served and, you know, gain on their experience, put them in different capacities to serve so that the organization will not lose them. Not necessarily they have to serve at the helm, but of course at different levels they can serve and where people can draw the, you know, the, um, some resources and draw the experience that they would have gained over the period of time that they have served as, 
at the helm of the organization. Yeah. Asim, uh, Mariah asked you just now about your CWI vice presidency role, and I want to go there with this discussion because Cricket West Indies has struggled for well over a decade now to resuscitate uh, cricket in, in the Caribbean. And um, I heard Dr. Kishore Shallow heaping praises on you as a TNT cricket boss, and uh, especially in the women's game, the, the model of development that you've had for your women cricketers. TNT have produced some of the most outstanding cricketers on the women's team um, in the past couple of, of decades. Um, tell the Caribbean fans watching us now something positive about the future of West Indies cricket, because I think a lot of fans in the region are losing hope. Well, first of all, Dr. Shallow, he praised on the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, not specifically as Basarat. Okay. Uh, cricket Board and the executive would have worked hard to put programs in place. What happened is that in the Caribbean, we must be able to get all territories, every single territory in the Caribbean in one page. And we must start the, our development programs at a very early age. We are fortunate in Trinidad and Tobago to have a very strong primary schools cricket league and the secondary schools cricket league, where we have hundreds of schools participating in these, these um, cricket leagues in Trinidad. And then the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board have on the 13s, where we have interzone on the 13s tournament, on the 15, on the 17, on the 19. And we have started a, a four team on the 23 tournament on a, on a yearly basis. We feel that if each territory have programs like these, we see in the very near future, shorter than people think, that I believe West Indies Cricket can you know, start the, the progress of reaching to the top. Yeah. But you cannot have one territory or two territories doing it um, alone. We must engage the other territories to be, have strong development and grassroots programs, just as we had you know, in the, in, the, in the 90s and early 2000s when we were still competing with the other nations of the world. We maybe wasn't winning on a regular basis, but we were competing. And I think if we start this, very soon we are going to see the results of the development and grassroots programs. Mm. Thank God, yesterday in our Trinidad and Tobago budget um, presentation by the Honorable Minister of Finance, 59 million TT dollars was put aside for, for community sports in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think that is a huge investment. I think it is something that will reap rich dividends in the not too distant future in Trinidad. And of course, we must appeal to our Caribbean governments that, you know, we must invest in sports, invest in cricket. And I think if that is done, you know, we are going to see the results very soon. One quick comment as you glorify the youth programs in Trinidad and Tobago on the 13s, on the 15s, and so on. Earlier this summer, I remember when your under-19 team was going across to play in the uh, CWI U19 tournament, you had suggested that is the best uh, under-19 team in the history of Trinidad and Tobago's cricket, and you were expecting a lot from them, and they didn't do well. What went wrong? Well, we, we had a post-mortem recently with the manager and coach, and um, we think that the players faltered. They, there is a lot have to be done with the mental state of the players. I, and the reason why I said I said that it was the best prepared team, but something was left out and and people feel that I said it was the best team. But maybe I maybe said it was the best team too. But the, that team was the most and was best prepared in every facet of the game. Um, there was a lot of money that was spent in preparation of the team. And we felt uh, when the team left, that they will have done very well. There is a, quite a few outstanding cricketers in that team who really did not um, stand up or, or, or perform as was expected. Right, and Azim, we have something to plan. We have a big World Cup coming up and Trinidad and Tobago will be a part of it. How much work do we have to do to get ready for that big event? Well, I, the... LOCs have to be have to be formalized, and, and I think that there, there is still some work to be done at the Brian Lara Stadium in terms of construction, which was approved already. I, I must commend the, 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 the people at the Brian Lara Stadium for taking the initiative and move as fast as possible 
And, um, and I think it is the extension of the media center. They are going to do some work on the northern side where the media center is. Uh, um, other than that, you know, the outfield is in pristine condition as we speak. Uh, cricket will be played there for Super 50 and maybe the regional, um, the regional 4A games there and at the Queen's Park Oval. And I think our, our facility is in excellent shape to, to host the World Cup. It is about seven months away, seven, eight months away. And I'm quite confident that when the fixtures is released and the schedule is released and so on, you know, Trinidad will be... Well, I've already identified Trinidad as a host venue. Yes. That, you know, more work will be, will be put in place to ensure that, that we do a good job in hosting part of the World Cup. All right, Azim, well, I want to thank you so much. As always, it's, it's a pleasure chatting with you here on the Sports Max. So would you keep up the good work and we'll connect when next I come to Trinidad. Thanks very much. I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to it. Take care. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back on the Sports Max Zone. <laughs>